So this is a typical data representation passage from the ACT science section. Now, you don't need to be a great scientist in order to do well on this section, but you do need to know how experiments are set up, how to draw that data out of these charts and graphs, and to be able to draw conclusions from the data that you have. Now, we're gonna practice all that in the next few questions. So take a few moments to read through this experiment, and then we'll review the graphs together. Okay, so in this experiment, we've got two different runners taking different tactics to finish this race. The first runner is choosing to accelerate early. The second runner is choosing to accelerate later in the race. Now let's take a closer look at the figures so we have a better idea of what information we have before we dive into the questions. Now in this first figure, we've got the independent variable of time, how long the runner is taking in the x-axis. And the y-axis, we are measuring the dependent variable distance. It's dependent on the time that the runner spends. In the second figure, we've got, again, the independent variable time in the x-axis. And this time in the y-axis, we're measuring something else. We're measuring the dependent variable velocity. And so we can see how the velocity changes based on the runner's strategies. Now, let's see what the questions are asking and remember to draw the information we need in order to get our answer. In this question, we're asked to find the average velocity of runner X, and we're taking a closer look at figure two in order to do so. And then just to remind yourself, you are looking at runner X, specifically the average velocity between the time interval of 40 and 140 seconds. Now, another way to think about average is where do most of the data points lie? And if we take a look at the first data point in answer choice F, that's 40 to 140 in terms of time interval, and on the y-axis, it's between zero meters a second and two meters a second. Now you can see how none of runner X's data points lie here. So we can definitely eliminate answer choice F. This is not going to be the average velocity. Uh, it's definitely not going to be uh, in this interval either. Two to two meters per second to four meters a second. There's a couple of data points in here, but it's not the average. And if we compare the last two, well, there's definitely a lot of data points in this velocity, uh, four meters per second and six meters per second, and uh, more so than the last answer choice, answer choice J. So if we go back to answer choice H, between four meters a second and six meters a second, because this is where all the data points lie, we can uh, confidently choose this as our answer and the average velocity of runner X. So in this question, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more work to get to our answer, but let's take it step by step. Again, we're asked about runner X and runner X's velocity. So we know we're looking at figure two. Now we need to look at the velocity runner X had at 90 seconds. So let's take a look specifically at that data point. At 90 seconds, runner X was running at approximately 3.5 meters per second. Now, the question is asking how much time would it take for runner X to run an additional 100 meters after the race is complete? So if we're looking for time, just remember that three-part formula, distance equals rate times time. Remember, we're solving for time here, so we gotta move rate over to the left-hand side by dividing both sides by rate. So actually, the equation we're gonna use is time is equal to distance over rate. Now that works out because we have the distance, we have the rate. The distance is the additional 100 meters that runner X will run. And the rate is, well, the speed at this 90 second mark, which was 3.5 meters per second. So we've got time is equal to 100 over 3.5. That absolutely matches answer choice C, which is our answer. So in this final question, it asks that burning question that I'm sure we all have, which is which runner won? Which strategy was better? Well, if we take a closer look at figure one, we can determine that. 
And remember, this race was 800 meters long. So that's the point that we need to look at. So the way to think about it is, if you have time in the x-axis, which runner took less time to get to the 800 meter mark? That's how we determine the winner. And if we think about it in those terms, well, it looks like runner Y took less time to get to this distance marker. That means runner Y is the winner and our answer for number 12. As you can see, the science section is all about the data. So make sure you take the time to invest in understanding the passage and the figures so that from a strategic standpoint, you know what information you have in front of you in order to get to your answer. And then just make sure you're drawing the data from the right place. A lot of times the questions will tell you where to look, but sometimes you will have to use your critical thinking in order to be able to get the information and get the answer. All right, where do we go from here? We've taken a look at all the sections that the ACT will challenge you with. So what are the next steps? Let's talk about that. First off, you got to take a practice test. You got to know where you're starting from, and then you've got to set a target score for yourself. That'll really help you determine how much time you're going to invest into this and where you're going to focus your energy. And make sure you're using strategy. It's not just about the content. You have to get that question practice in so you get more comfortable, more confident with the different questions you're going to be handling on the ACT. Now make a plan. You can't just do this uh, without thinking about all the other things you're responsible for. You've got to create a realistic plan that meets your needs and all that will be determined by where you're starting from. You know, listen, take a free practice test that'll really help you get to where you need to go. And to close things off, I'll leave you with five last tips. First off, burnout's a real thing, so make sure you stick to the plan. Your friends can help you do that. Not only will they provide you support, but they'll also give you accountability. And look for real ACT questions because you really want to make sure you're looking at practice that mirrors the real exam. And four, start with your strengths. Don't just look at what you're bad at. Help yourself believe that you can do this. And lastly, my favorite tip of all, make sure you embrace your mistakes. That's how you're going to get better. Focus on how you're going to change the way you do things on the real exam. Remember, you're doing all of this so that when you get to the final test, you'll have no surprises. Let us know how we can support. We will be there for you. Let us know what questions you have and best of luck in your journey. We know that you can do this.